everybody. It is the Ride Share Reseller. Labor Day weekend. It is Labor Day. I have a little bit of time, so I'm going to shoot this video of um, my five months total out of eBay. I'm going to be totally transparent. I'm going to show you guys what I have sold in dollar amount. And so you can you can truly feel like, hey, you know, this guy's legit. It's straightforward. So um, I'm going to do that. I'm also going to uh, show you some sold items at the end of the video. I'll go through them rather quickly, but I will go through them. I will also show you the painting. And many of you who have probably saw the painting video where I bought a Jack Lecoq's painting for $100 are probably curious, did I sell it? And I did. I finally sold it. And I'm going to show you what I sold it for and explain how I sold it and the reason behind the way I sold it. Okay, so that'll show up too. And also this morning I was lucky. I had a baseball card collection. It was nothing spectacular, trust me. It was, you know, I wanted a videotape, but the guy was, you know, I didn't feel like he was going to be into that. So I had gone through my, you know, my garage uh, a couple of weeks ago and cleaned it out. This is what I'm talking about with people that uh, if you uh, want to start an eBay, look inside your garage, look inside your house, and uh, that's where you're going to find your starting capital. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to take, here's the money. I sold, oops, there it is. I sold that collection for $400. I was willing to take $200. He said, I'll give you $400. So $400 when I sold my, it, it, to me it was, there wasn't much in there. I had looked through through it, and I thought to myself, how am I going to get rid of all this stuff? eBay is, you know, um, with baseball cards, it's just a nightmare. Hockey, football. I think I had 23 boxes of, you know, small sets. I had some sets, that kind of thing. Mostly from the 90s. Nothing spectacular. Some older cards here and there. But there was no, you know, hey, this guy bought it for 400 and got a $10,000 card in there. There's just no way. So I'm going to take... The four hundred dollars, okay, the four hundred bucks, and I'm going to start a spreadsheet. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to use this four hundred dollars on my thrifting until it's gone. I'm going to bring an envelope and I'm going to pay cash for everything that I buy until the four hundred dollars is gone. I'm going to put together a spreadsheet and show you what I bought it for, what it sold for, and so on, and try to show you. Uh, how to turn your garage or your home into making more money. So I'm, I'm gonna do that. I'll put the spreadsheet up when I start to sell stuff and let you look at it. That kind of will be interesting for me too. So we'll do that and we'll have some fun with that and see what happens, all right? So I've got 400 bucks worth of capital to work with, all right guys? All right, um, let's get into this. Let's take a look and see what's going on. Huh? Let's make sure I, oh boy, float on top. So I'm gonna have to come around here, sneak around. Uh, I might wanna make this a little bit smaller. Give me a second here. Make it a little smaller. How am I gonna do that? There we go. Move it just a hair over here. All right, let me see if I can, see how this comes out here. Thought I had it set up for float on top, but I guess I'm gonna have to make this a little smaller. All right, I'm gonna make that just a little smaller, and then this should drop in down underneath here. Right, you can kind of see it over here in the left. That's perfect. That'll work. That'll make it work. Make this a little bit bigger. All right, so we're starting off. I told you I start off in April first. So April 1st was uh, when I started doing this, more or less uh, trying to make it work. And during April, you can see my total here on the left. Excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze, 28,000, 28,000, $2,818 for the first month. And um, uh, that was a pretty good start. You can see down here, a couple uh, started picking up down at the end. Middle of the first of the month was slow, and then the, towards the end, I, I picked up. So that was the starting point, 28.18. Then we went, I'm going to give you the next total for the two months total. Okay, this is now the two month total. So if you look over here on the left, you'll see it. 
from April 1st to June 2nd, which is, I think, 60 days. I think that's how it works. So I April and May totals are 8,375. If you take away the 2,800, uh, is that 28? So 55. So I almost doubled my sales, right? Yeah, doubled. So I went from 28 to 55 um, for May. So May doubled. So April doubled. I mean, uh, April was 2,800. May doubled to 5,500-ish, so almost twice. And uh, that was a big increase. So you can see again uh, the beginning. Here's April, and you can start to see some of the some of the movement here. You know, pretty steady. There was a few days with nothing much going on, but again, uh, a good start. So let's jump through. Now we're going to jump up into uh, June through August. All right. Let me kill this one out. Let me go June through August. All right. You can see uh, June over here through August. This is going to be June 3rd through the end of August 31st. So that's going to be a three-month total. And here's the three-month total of 25,228. So, um, you know, there was June would look, June looks like it was about six, 7,000. I have to double-check that. But anyhow, uh, that's where it's at, 25,000 for that three-month period. Uh, June to August. So if you multiply that times four, right? 25 times four, that's $100,000 for the year at that average, right? 25,000. So that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good clip there. You see it just kept getting increasing. So let's take a look at now August sales. We'll go through just my August. Here's my August from the 1st through the 31st, 11,000 and $34. That average is going to bring me 120, 130, right? That would be 130 a year sales on eBay if I kept that pace up. Do I think that's doable? I do. I, I think that that's, uh, you know, with the good, good hustle, uh, you, can, you can definitely um, do 10,000 a month. It depends on the area area of the United States you're in, but I think it's doable. Um, is it manageable? Yeah. Um, I've had to hustle. I enjoy it. I mean, I hustle a lot. I think if you see some of the videos, I'm out there constantly hustling. And this doesn't include my Amazon FBA books, which basically I, you know, that's a secondary little source for me. That's That's harder. I think FBA... Amazon is much more difficult, in my opinion, especially since you have to really kind of start out with books if you're going to really make it. You can do it the other way. You can you can make some money, but it's hard because you're you're gated in so many communities, so many categories, communities, gated communities. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think eBay is a much simpler route to go overall. Uh, I believe you have to start maybe with eBay and then. FBA is a slower process where you take your time trying to figure it out so you don't make mistakes and you can find some good inventory. That's the process I'm at right now. I have um, a lot of books that are in there. Uh, my eBay sales are about $6,000, so it's nothing compared to um, eBay. Uh, but it's a steady, nice source where they take care of all the shipping, returns, packaging, and so forth. So that's my sales, 11000 and 34 uh, for that month. So if I add up my total, it looks like my total is for five months, uh, 8,375 from April to June and 25,000 from June to August makes it 33,600 in total eBay sales for five months. You pan that over the year, right? 33, let's call it 34 times two, 10, uh, two, Double that, that would be 68, and you have two months left over, because uh, that would be a 10 month total, so two months, so 68, call it 85. Let's say just cheap on the easy side. At, at, at what it is now, which with just the physical numbers, that would be 85,000 in sales, but we know because the last three months I have been pretty steady at about 10. 10, 10, 10, oh, not 10, I should say, you know, um, the last two were like eight, 10, so, Anyhow, 
you know, somewhere around 100,000 in sales on eBay is the average that I'm looking at right now. Now, I'm going to show you, okay, some people ask now, okay, well, that's all good, right? I mean, kill this out. It's all good if you're, you know, what am I doing with my money? Well, look down here, you can see my active listings. My active listings is 526 right down here. And my total of that is 32,000. So everything sold off my active listings, it would be 32,000 more dollars. So basically I've taken my money and reinvested my money. Oh, I still have a pretty good sized bank account due to all my sales. I haven't obviously spent it all. I and mean, I've used some money here and there, but very little. So you can imagine, you know, what I've done. I mean, $32,000 in inventory from basically really starting with very little money, maybe three, 400 bucks. I mean, not, not a lot um, that I started with. And I turned it into a $32,541 inventory. So I've got 542, uh, is this, I, I have, 150, I don't know, I have 526, that's crazy, I can't read it, but it's whatever it is there. So 32,000 in inventory. Of that 32,000, I'm guessing that that 32,000 uh, was about five to $6,000 of uh, reinvested money to get that 32,000. Not much, but that's what I've turned into that. So I really, that's nothing really out of my bank account pocket, it's just out of my sales that I have made. And now I have a, a good flow, a nice flow. It's just kind of like Amazon FBA. You get stuff in, and pretty soon you build and build, be feed the beast. They say feed the monster. You got to feed eBay. You got to feed Amazon FBA. That's why you hear people list, put more stuff, list, list, list. Uh, you're not going to sell every single item, but you're going to get better at picking your items and so forth and so on. And those items are going to be um, selling maybe three months down the road, two months down the road, you're gonna see something pop up and go, oh, finally that's sold. So it's a matter of, yes, you do have to list, but you have to find quality. Just don't find something to throw it up there. You really uh, don't let that happen. Try to be really picky and, um, and get the best items that you can up. All right, I've got one more little screenshot here. Let's take a look at this. All right, I'll push it over to the side and I'll push this a little smaller. All right. So basically, here is um, you know as of t uh, this morning, I think, or last night. What is last night? Uh, my sixty-day total twenty thousand two forty-four in sales. Active listings five twenty-six. My solds are three thirty-six. So if you divide the solds, if you divide, I'm going to try and cursor over. You probably can't see it, but if you divide twenty thousand two forty-four by three thirty-six. It comes out to $60.25. So that's my average ticket. My average sale is $60.25. I don't know if that is uh, good, bad, uh, ugly. I don't know. I mean, that's just, uh, if a $60 item uh, per item is good, it seems like for me it is. Um, I'm sure there are higher. I'm sure there are lower. It's just where you, where you fall on that spectrum. And um, I tend to, like I said, swing more for the fences really try to find the uh, items that are more profitable or you know can really make me some good money. I pay up occasionally, but most of the time I don't. You see what I find this stuff for. It's not like I'm paying $100, $200. You know, but my biggest purchase was the, I believe the airplanes for $280, but that was an average price of $17 an item. So, uh, um, you know, even there it wasn't, even if I bought one, it was only 17 bucks. So again, uh, I look for good items. That's what everybody should be doing, obviously, is look for good quality. And it will uh, reward you in the long run. All right, so that's my, um, my first five months. Hopefully everybody's seen it now and it's pretty transparent out in the open. We'll try the $400. Let's see what we can do there. Let's see if we can build some kind of a video and let people know that, hey, the four hundred dollars, the four hundred dollars in the uh, in my garage of baseball cards. What can we turn four hundred dollars into? Let's give that a shot. See what happens, right? All right, let's get into some sold items. Uh, let me 
move some things around here. Kill some things out. Let's see. Hopefully I can do this without much problem. And the last item will be the painting. We'll discuss the painting at the at the end. I'll show you that one. All right, let's, uh, I'm gonna have to make this smaller. Nah, bummer. Yeah, let me see if I can change it. I don't know if I can. Uh, da, 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 da. Nope, I don't think I can, so I'm gonna have to work around this by making me smaller, which everybody will be pretty happy about. All right, put me up in the top. I'll put the items down on the bottom. There we go. Split it up. First item up. White Wings Limited Edition Paper Airplane Kit. This is kind of cool. I found this one. It was uh, at a... Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. I think it was uh, Goodwill. But anyhow, it was... I think it was 3 bucks, $3. And it sold pretty quickly for $27.95. Very, very good seller. Um, I had seen one before and it was missing a couple planes so I didn't bother with it this one I found and double checked all 15 were there in the booklet and everything so this was a cool little uh, quick flip all right let's take a look here interesting one again I've had two pair of these now this is a muckruck uh, black boots work waterproof there are two versions be careful one is steel toe one is regular and it's funny I had a guy asking me about this as far as what the toe comp composition was and you know going back and forth for like about 15 minutes as he tried to figure it out and I said well it's in the picture and I'm, I was trying to be nice to him before he could even get back to me the item had sold to another person so he lost out because he wasn't hundred percent sure but it, it was pretty much straightforward in the in the pictures and it did did not say steel toe and he wasn't looking for steel toe, he was just looking for the hard rubber composite toe, which is what these are. So anyhow, he missed out on that. He was a little disappointed, but I can't control that. Sometimes that happens to buyers. They wait and they lose. All right, here's another pair of shoes. Interesting shoes here because these are um, Dr. Comfort Mary Jane diabetic shoes. These went to someone in Europe, so the shipping's a little askew there. It, I think that shows you the total price that they paid for shipping to Europe because I only got about $15 to Kentucky where it goes. So I pushed on that, and then $46.95 was the price of the shoes, and on those I paid, uh, I believe, $7.99. The muckruck boots, I paid $10. Back up one, those boots I paid $10. These shoes here, I paid $7.99. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right. Yamaha Receiver. Multimedia Cinema HDMI. So this is the key. I think a lot of these now, these unless they're really vintage and old, uh, these guys are now wanting HDMI, Bluetooth. Bluetooth is really important. If you can find them with Bluetooth, you've, you're, you're golden there. I am not afraid to ship these. Many people won't touch them because they're afraid to ship them, damages, all this other stuff. But this is where you make some of your big money. Um, this one wasn't necessarily a big money one. Uh, most of the ones that I have sell for two fifty and above. This was just kind of a little, uh, you know, quick flipper, and um, it was cost me ten dollars. It has the remote. The remote always is a big plus, but you don't have to have it to sell it. You don't even have to have it working. So there's all, you can sell these in many different ways. There are people out there that will pick these up because they know how to work on them, they wanna work on them, and they're valuable. So don't be afraid of these. You can ship them. You ship them FedEx Smart Post. That's about the only way you're gonna do it. And it's just gonna to have to be that way. And uh, just hunt around for some boxes and keep them around. Keep around the good boxes. So I've got a box out there that's waiting for my $500 receiver. It's a beautiful box. It's gonna package that one up real nice. So uh, again, don't be afraid of them. All right, here's another one, very interesting pickup. It's the Air Force, it's an Air Force scrapbook keepsake album. And these are out there, they're very cool. I paid $1.99 for each one. I don't think I mentioned the Yamaha receiver was $10, it was 10. Anyhow, this was $1.99. 
uh, scrapbook of America. It's kind of got the uniform on the outside, and it says U.S. Air Force, everything. It looks like that. They do it for the Marines, the Navy, Coast Guard, everything. I had two of these for $1.99 each at Savers, and they both sold for $29.95 and $15.95 shipping. So each one was $29.95. Here is a really another classic example. This is a good little um, electronic item. It's called a Modu 828 Firewire Audio Interface. And uh, I made a mistake on this one, but I, I rectified it by somebody on eBay, a watcher. And they make two versions. They make what they call a combo, which is Firewire USB, and then they make one that does Firewire only. And this viewer told me, hey, you don't have the combo. I thought I had the combo. I don't know what I was thinking. So it was up there for about a week and a half, two weeks, and finally I changed it back to Firewire. Now, the USB combo version is about $329. So I'll probably get about $300. So I put this one back up for $250, and it sold right away. I think just me correcting the ad made that difference. And it sold for 250 bucks. It's not very big. It was pretty small. So this is... This is no bigger than some things that you everybody else ships. So that was a real sweet little find and it sold for $250 and I paid the shipping on that. All right, this one here is, you saw me pick this up last week. This is how fast it sold. It is called the Color Selector by Lake Systems and it measures pH and some other stuff in the water to pick out the right lure for fishing. Uh, the box was pretty well beat up. It was brand new, but it had been sitting around. There's just stuff on it. I took it out, cleaned it up, took it apart, and showed the pictures and said, hey, I opened it to clean it. It is brand new, and it didn't matter. It sold quickly for $65, $12.95 shipping, and I believe I paid $5.99 for that. So again, old electronics, perfect in the package. Can't go wrong. All right, let's get into all right more shoes. I did really well with shoes. I've been doing better with shoes, and that's because I'm picky. I am now only buying new shoes or shoes like these, Keens. Anybody who's been in this business probably knows Keen. Very good shoe. I mean, you got to kill these things to wear them out. I believe I paid ten dollars for this. You know, again the Moto. I didn't tell you about the Moto. I'm like not with it. The Moto I played, you won't believe it, I paid $8 for that, the audio thing just passed. I'm sorry, 8 bucks for that. This I paid 10 I got to pay attention here. These shoes I paid 10 and um, sold for $54.95 and $12.95 for shipping. So look out for those Keens, they make the sandals too. Uh, those are pretty good seller. All right, let's get the price out of the way on the airplane. Everybody knows the airplanes, I think, they should. $17.50 is the average price for these. I have 16 of them. I have sold three. I sold three of them. Two of them for 200 each, and this one sold for 100. So I now have $500 in sales off my $280 investment. Every plane after this is pure profit. There are 13 of them. About four of them will sell for over 200. One of them will sell for over 300. It's just a matter of when. Christmas coming up, I got a feeling I'm going to move a few more of those planes. Anyhow, this one sold for $99.99, and you'll notice the shipping is $32.95. These guys are not cheap to ship. Uh, they're not heavy. It's just the box is long, and it's just screwball with the cubic rate. So you got to be careful when you see stuff like this that you really get your uh, shipping down. Uh, $32.95, so they can go anywhere from about $25 to 40 that's the range in the shipping price for those and again I paid uh, 1750 for it right, next item up more boots this was another find at the Salvation Army uh, I believe I paid 899 for these I had a 25% off coupon so it was whatever 13 something like that and I got it down to eight um, new men's work boots by Red Wing Steel toe, sixty-four ninety-five. Uh, buyer paid nineteen ninety-five. Again, very nice. These boots were extremely nice, and uh, they sold. They sold fairly quickly. It took about a month. I think a month. 
Um, you know, when, with shoes, the problem you have is you got to find the right buyer with the right shoe size, all that kind of stuff, right? All got to line up right. Uh, here's something that if you ever see, you got to pick them up, guys. This is the uh, uh, Crane Radio, CC Crane Radio, portable AM, FM, long range. I paid, I want to say $8. I'm pretty sure it was $8 at Goodwill and $47.95. Buyer played $21.95. Here's one where I, I actually did better on the shipping. I do not use calculated shipping rate. I might in the future, but as of right now, I always price from California to Boston. And then I always will price about 80% of my things using FedEx Smart Post if it becomes a better deal time-wise and so forth for me and the buyer, I will ship it a different way and it basically upgrades them. So if I'm set at Smart Post and this comes in at Priority 2 Day, which he was in California, Priority 2 Day, and it was like eight ninety five. dollars well, there you go. He gets it in two days. He's all, wow, he saw the original. It was going to take 8 to 10. He always gets upgraded to two, 2 Day. He's happy and I make a few extra bucks in the shipping. Sometimes you might lose out one or two and you might gain one or two. Overall, you want to be even at the end of the day. That's your best bet is to be even, maybe a little ahead. You just don't want to be blowing it on shipping. And early on, you might, as a young seller, uh, you could uh, screw up your shipping a lot. So really practice that, figure out. You know, Pretty much you're going to know uh, within two or three months what everything is going to generally ship for. Okay. All right, this one here is for my friend, the Commonwealth Picker. He was looking, he was he was at a garage sale and I saw Prince Racket in one of his videos and I thought, oh, take a look at that, take a look. Uh, I don't know if he completely looked at it, but he said that it was, a, they were asking 10 or, I don't know, 10 or $12 for it. And it might not have been one that was worth anything. But I picked this one up at the Goodwill and the great thing about these is like most places, four or five bucks max they'll put on these. They just... They don't know how to look them up. They don't know what to do. So this was a really... And you're going to know when you pick them up. When you pick up a really nice tennis racket, it feels right. It just looks right. It's like you pick up something that's very expensive. You just know, hey, this is pretty expensive. Same thing with tennis rackets, golf clubs, all that kind of stuff. Um, you just know. And um, so I picked this one up, and there was a second one right behind it. And the Prince one is pretty cut and dry. And... Uh, it ended up selling for $99.95 and $15.94. And again, like I said, it paid like five bucks for it. Now the racket behind that, the one that I've still got up for sale, is a head tennis racket. And that's the one where you gotta be careful. Uh, that brand has two, two places they make their rackets, China and Austria. The one in Austria is the one you want. You gotta look for the symbol made in Austria on the racket. Sometimes you'll get caught and you buy the China one thinking you have the Austrian one, put it online and someone says, hey, that's the China one and we don't want that. So be careful because some of those rackets, some of those head tennis rackets, uh, 250 bucks if it's the right Austrian mat, uh, racket. Um, again, I think mine I've got up for 149. Uh, it'll, it, it'll eventually sell, but I've got it up for 149. So look for good quality tennis rackets. And they always are, hey, they're going to cost you the ship. They're just a little odd. They're going to be about $20 to ship. And it, believe it or not, it's kind of a hard box to to find or to make or whatever. So uh, you might want to keep some of those oddball shaped boxes around just for stuff like this. That's what I do. I keep boxes that fit tennis rackets. All right, now here's another find. Uh, I was trying to videotape uh, with my GoPro, and I'm not very good at it right now at garage sales, so I'm getting better, but I was at a garage sale that she has. was I give her credit. She was a hoarder, and she was dumping a lot of Disney stuff. Disney stuff you know, can sell, but it's it's tricky. It's This, this market's saturated with it. And uh, I bought a pile of stuff for her for, my, for $100, and there were three of these little statues like this. So this is the first one to sell. $49.95 plus $5 shipping. The other item that I sold out of there was a bunch of toys that were included, little toys. There were 90 of them, and I sold them off for about 25 bucks plus shipping. So I'm getting my money back on that box. I have several very good items. Uh, one at 150 another at 100 Two more of these. 
So I will, you know, definitely make some good money on that. Um, more towards Christmas, I think. But this one, this one did sell. All right, this was a you know interesting tool find. Um, this is a, a eight inch metal vacuum cup, and they people who use this are the people who use it for glass, installing glass windows and stuff. It's the thing that you see stuck to the window. It's actually very cool to work. It works. I did it on my granite countertop. I thought, oh man, I can't get you know it may come off, but it's kind of cool. It's a little suction thing that just you know hooks up on there. I paid six dollars at Goodwill, and it was forty-eight dollars, uh, and I paid the shipping. So another good little, uh, good little find. And all right, here we go. This is another good one. Um, it's a Michael Graves Stratego designer game, and it was in the box, and it was uh, five ninety-nine. It's at Goodwill. Um, yeah, their games are priced anywhere from about $5.99 to $9.99, at least in where I'm at. That's pretty much their price range. And this one was at $5.99. Stellar little thing. I knew I had a, a good keeper, so I, I took away the um, offer on this one. It did not allow an offer. Uh, I knew it would sell, and it did. It sold for $65 and $9.95 shipping. It was tempting to keep this game. Sorry. It was tempting to keep this game. I really, uh, it was really nice. I, I liked the game of Stratego, but it was like, nah, I'm gonna sell it. You know, I don't want to become a collector. So sixty-five dollars off my six-dollar purchase. Pretty cool. All right, big sale. This one here, I paid. I paid twenty-six ninety-nine, I think, for this item. Safeco Vienna Plus Silver Espresso Coffee and Cappuccino Machine. And uh, it probably had just gone up. And I uh, tested it, and it works. And it worked. So it's it's out, and it's delivered. And it was $401. This is like my third espresso machine. Now I have one more, a Starbucks one that's up. And this one was a little tricky to pack, but at $401, you find a way to pack it pretty nice. And... The buyer paid $40 shipping, so this buyer paid $450 for this uh, espresso coffee machine. Um, you just got to make sure they work. So there you go. Pretty cool. Alright, All right. this was an, another interesting pickup at the Goodwill. This is about a four foot long Vineyard Vines wooden decorative ore. It says on there something about Vineyard Vines. I can't read it, but it's got the whale logo. It's about a four foot long ore. This one actually sold to somebody overseas, um, $63.95, and the buyer paid $27.70 for shipping. I believe I was at $14.95 for shipping. Uh, had the perfect box to fit it in, so that worked out really well. I had uh, one of those ores and I think three signs. Uh, that These were actual target pieces that were in Goodwill and that I picked up for $9.00. So not a great amount of money, but it was a nice little flip, you know, a unique item. All right, one more here before we get to the painting. This was a really cool one. I only paid $5 for this. Uh, I didn't know what it was until I picked it up, and it's a Road Warrior 2000 Extreme Cigar Protection Case, Pelican. Pelican's a name brand for uh, hard cases, and I uh, paid $5.00. There was no real comps. I think there was one, but I had to, I mean, it wasn't that great, but still, it was a good flip. Paid $40, and shipping was $12.95. Interesting thing, you know, you wouldn't think somebody would protect their cigars, but when they're traveling, I guess they do. So, uh, very, very interesting um, uh, item to sell, and only paid 5 bucks, so that was even better. All right, we're going to get into the painting. I'm going to pop it up here in a second. I'm going to give you the story real quick. Found it at a rummage sale, paid $100 for it. Knew that it had some sort of value, didn't know exactly what, but I was predicting, I, I thought between four and 8000 That was my range. I really did. So, managed to contact two um, auction houses, one in L.A., one up here in Northern California. They're both very interested in the painting. 
um, until I found out what their commissions were and their fees and so forth. By the time you're done, their commissions and fees can be 40%. That's about what you're going to end up paying, 40%. You think eBay's 10? Well, these guys want 40 because it's not a very valuable painting, like millions, right? They can then, you know, they take a 10% buyer fee even on the million dollar paintings. So here, it's just straight commission is whatever it sells for. They take basically 35, 40%. You have to pay for photographing, for the catalogs, and so forth and so on. So, and then the one thing that really turned me off was uh, that I had to have a no reserve bid. So that was risky. You know, I could end up selling uh, potentially a four or six thousand dollar painting for two thousand dollars and end up, you know, so that was my big risk. So I decided no, I was going to put it up on eBay. So I did, I put it up on eBay. And here's what happened. All right, it's up on eBay, and hopefully you can see it. There's the painting. In person, it was really fun. It was really stellar. It was very, very good. And it sold to a local person, which is what I thought it would do. And it sold for $1,495. Very nice painting. Uh, went to somebody in my area. They came by and just fell in love with it. Uh, they knew of the, the artist. And I turned my hundred dollars into fourteen hundred and ninety-five, so it did sell. So my thinking, again, my thinking was this: if I give it to the auction house and let them deal with it, let's say that I sold it for four thousand. If I did, they were going to take forty percent, right? And then some other fees, and I have to travel with it. Blah blah. So let's say two thousand, right? So four thousand down to two. Now I'm now I'm at two thousand. I make two thousand, right? But let's say I go on and, and it's a no reserve bid and it sells for fifteen hundred. Now it's like seven hundred. So yeah, you know, I was a risk I wasn't really willing to take. At least I was in control of something here. And I put it up and just stood my ground. I was surprised. I had seven watchers right away on it. And uh you know, it finally did sell, so it was a pretty good a pretty good purchase. And that's the story behind uh what I sold the painting for. All right, guys, um, that's going to be it, I think. Let me kill this out here. We're going to uh, uh, use our new new $400 to create a new um, kind of a challenge, right? See if we can, what we can make for, for that money. It's been fun, five months. I've only been doing it five months. Uh, I hope I'm doing pretty good. Feels like I am. I'm hustling. I, uh, I did take off Sunday, and, and today is Monday. And I haven't done anything for uh, uh, for those two days except for ship and a few things like that. So I feel refreshed, ready to go for the week. And hey, next weekend is football. And I believe the Commonwealth picker is a Ram fan. I always got to give him a little bit of a shot. Uh, I guess they'll probably be 0-1 and, and the 49ers will be 1-0. But anyhow, um, he's a good guy. If you guys really want to watch a channel, you watch the Commonwealth picker. He's what it's all about. He's... He's been doing it 20 years, and he's a uh, him and his kids, the homeschool hustlers, are are what picking and eBay and everything is is about, and and his wife, Blue Ridge Mama. So anyhow, I always give him a, a shout out. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I will see you next time.